Hi everyone and welcome to the ProBuilder texturing part one tutorial, this being applying materials and colors to your ProBuilder objects. In part two we're going to get into the actual UV editing. Uh, so first of all, uh, there's quite a few options you can use in ProBuilder to add both material and color to the objects. The first and simplest one being to simply use vertex colors. So in the ProBuilder GUI panel over here, if you just click on vertex colors in the tools section there, you can open up the vertex color palette and this you'll be using to apply colors onto the objects so you can click on the uh, color picker down on the bottom beneath each color button and choose and set a color that you'd like for each and go through just the same and once you have those set however you'd like you can begin applying them to the model so uh, move into the face editing mode the element mode there select any number of faces you'd like to and click on, say, any color, I suppose. And just like that, you can start adding in color to the scene. This is a great way, especially if you are initially building up a level that needs uh, team designations or something like that. A uh, great way to add some color variation to sort of test out different areas uh, without having to get too complicated at all. And of course it'll work on any material that supports the vertex colors. So just make sure you have that, uh, or just use the default. It really works well, especially with the simple default prototype texture. A great way to uh, build up your early levels and not waste too much time on texturing until you really need to. Speaking of texturing, we'll move on to that. So vertex colors, we can close that out. Uh, actually, we'll bring that back up so we can change these back to white. Remember, you can always click on any face on a ProBuilder object and double click to select all the faces. And then I'll click on the white button and set them all back to white so we no longer have those vertex colors set since they would show through over top of the textures and materials that we're going to add. We have quite a few ways that you can apply materials to your objects. Uh, first of all, I'm going to exit the uh, element mode and back to just regular object level mode and now I can simply drag and drop any material right onto a pro builder object and since I'm in object mode not in element mode it's going to apply to the full object so I'll grab this wood material and I'll drop it onto each of these um, wooden support type things <laughs> uh, Pretty hastily built scene here, but I think it'll do well to uh, showcase this. So that's the first and simplest method of applying material directly onto an object. Uh, next, maybe you'd want to apply it onto just a certain face. So let's say the uh, top of these walkways, or whatever they might be, we'd like to apply this tile material. If I drag it onto the object itself in object mode, it's just going to apply to everything, which we don't want. So instead, I will undo that material application. And instead, I can move into face mode and select all the faces I would like that to apply to. And one thing here, I could go around and select each of the faces on, on their own, or just use the grow command with a uh, angle and automatically select all of those without having to do all the work myself. With those selected, I can now drag and drop the tiles material and it will apply only to the faces that I have selected. So that is the second method of drag and drop. However, we still have a couple extra options, namely by opening up the material palette from the tool section of the GUI. And here we have the option to quick paint via the quick material or use the material palette itself to apply materials. So the quick material, simply click on the picker button next to the material name and then choose let's say we want this square brick texture and we want to apply this to a certain face only. This is very simple to do with a quick material just hold down control and shift and left click on any face and then we'll instantly paint it right onto that. So very very simple to do. You can also select any faces and just click apply and it'll set it directly on there. You can also pick a material from the scene by selecting a face with any material on it and click on match selection and it will pick that uh, that selection up. 
So let's say we want to, uh, or we have a, pretend we had a much more complicated scene than this, and you had lots of materials, and you don't want to be uh, constantly searching through the, uh, the project folder. Here's where the material palette comes in handy, and that you can set up a number of materials. I'll drop in all the materials I have here, which uh, isn't, isn't very many, but uh, just for example. Now we have in the material palette, these are set up and I can begin applying them. So I select any face. Let's say I actually want uh, these side faces here. And I want to start applying these right on. I can just click on the application button next to the material itself and it applies it right on. You'll notice they also say Alt plus and then a number and you can use that to apply via the keyboard. So if I selected a few faces and then went to apply them, select these here. So that brick rounded is, is Alt 2. So I just hold on Alt and hit 2 and it instantly applies. And you can do that for any of the materials uh, all the way up 1 through 0 or 1 through 10, uh, depending how you think of that there. So a very quick way to have a nice large list of materials and apply them quickly throughout your scene. Another thing, if 10 materials isn't enough, you can add on as many others as you'd like to. These won't be able to use the alt numbers, uh, they're just extras there, but they are very handy if you have lots and lots of materials that you need to keep track of. You can also click the little X button next to the apply, which will get rid of the custom materials there. And that's it for the uh, applying materials and textures, as well as the vertex colors. So lots of options there, and be sure to also check out the UV editing tutorial that will be up next right after this. Thanks, and see you there.